Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I know y'all are thinking she's back, long time to see. I know y'all, I just, I don't have an excuse. I've just been living life, um, mom life as always, wife life, uh, newborn life at this point. <laughs> so things have been like chaotic, but um, everybody's doing well. Hope all you guys are doing well. I hope you guys have just like been continuing to prep and do what you need to do to make sure that you're prepared for your families. Um, this video today is just going to be discussing um, how we handle friends and family that are not prepping. I know you guys are thinking like, what in the world? Like, there's no way that people are not prepping. Y'all, I kid you not, there are people that are still not prepping. I have family members who are not prepping who think, I don't know what they think at this point. I don't know if they just um are oblivious to what's going on or just don't really think it's going to be that serious and just think we're always going to have access to all the things that we have access to um what blows my mind is that if nothing else got everybody prepping or got anyone to start prepping i can't even talk y'all if nothing else would make somebody start prepping or like even kind of like dive into prepping or like start researching it you would think this baby formula shortage would have got like the wheels spinning and real wheels rolling for everybody um because i feel like once the formula shortage hit that was like a whole new ball game like a lot of people saw it coming some people didn't see it coming some people um didn't know how serious it would be but guys it's like when it comes to babies if they're letting the shortages happen um and the shortages have happened with i mean because babies are innocent babies kids everybody's innocent so it's like if they can't keep everything going as far as that and yes there were recalls and things of that nature too um but from what i read a couple of weeks ago um certain people were given the information several months ago i think towards the end of last year that this was something that could definitely happen and they just didn't do what they needed to do to handle um, and get a hold of the situation before it got out of hand. So not only were we seeing shortages, but when this happened, it's like, okay, everybody needs to wake up. If we have newborn starving, um, older babies starving, there's even some kids who need like a special formula just for certain medical reasons that are not able to eat like table foods like we eat, um, and adults as well. But I know there's kids, um, who definitely need like certain types of formula and this formula shortages shortage has affected them severely. So how do we handle friends and family? I want to know in the comments below, how do you guys go about talking to your friends and family? Have you gotten to the point where you've just given up or are you like prepping for them while you're prepping for your family? For me, um, I'm not going to say that I've given up, but it's like, at this point, I feel like I'm talking to the wall um, just because you're refusing to acknowledge that there's an issue. And don't get me wrong. Um, I've had a lot of people tell me that, you know, God's got us and I'm not going to prep. I'm all on board. Y'all know how I feel about the Lord. I've talked about him on here. Um, but I also feel like he expects us to use our common sense and prep as well. Um, just because he's going to take care of us and watch over us doesn't mean that we shouldn't do our part. That's how I feel. Um, you guys may feel differently. And that's okay because we're all different. We're all going to have differences of opinions. Um, but I, as a Christian, definitely feel like I still need to do my part. And my part is prepping for my family and doing what I need to do, um, you know, whether it's you know, getting like the water filtration system or buying extra cans of beans this week or extra bag of rice next week or something. I still want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can. So I can say, just in case SHCF happens, I can say that I know without a doubt that we did all we can do for our family and to do the best that we can as far as prepping and being as, most, or mu as much prepared as, pro as possible. I'm getting tongue-tied. Y'all know how I get tongue-tied, <laughs> especially when I haven't come on camera in a while. Um, so it's like, I don't know... If I can, I can stack aside some food for family, like the rice and beans and everything. But it's like, if you're going to do that, how much do you get? Like, do you just get enough for them to kind of like tie them over just a little bit? Or do you get like months worth? Um, I know some people are in a different situation. I don't have grown kids per se that are out on their own. I mean, a lot of my kids are of age, but they're not grown and they're definitely not out the house. So I don't have to worry about like getting, um, food for like their families that they've had and you know 
like grandkids and stuff like that. It's just like our five, our six kids now. Um, so I just, again, what are you guys doing? I know I probably should pick up a couple of extra bags of rice and beans. I don't have any family that is near me though. Um, it's kind of just myself, my husband and our kids. We do have family along the East coast uh, in North Carolina is like where the majority of our family is. And just like even a couple hours away from here. Um, and then they're spread throughout the United States. So, um, I mean, it's not like we have anybody local. Y'all, I am sweating. I'm in my car and I didn't have my keys. I thought I had my keys when I came out here and I didn't. And I didn't feel like walking back inside. So, I'm sweating. Whew. Y'all, these hormones anyways, it's got me. I'm still big. I'm still big. I'm still at this weight. I haven't lost my baby weight. I've lost like 15 pounds. So, um, it's a little bit of a struggle. But, um, yeah, so you guys tell me guys, what you guys are doing in the comments below. Like I said, I'm definitely going to pick up, like, some rice and beans. I don't know outside of that what else I can pick up. I mean, I don't feel like I want to. That sounds so selfish. I don't feel like I'm going to go out and, like, splurge and, like, get them clothes for, like, the next sizes in case something happens or, um, you know, things like that. But just food, definitely. Like, hygiene items. I mean, I coupon a lot, too. I haven't been the last couple months, but... I have a nice stockpile, so I can definitely give them, like, the toiletries and things of that nature. But at what point do you just say, hey, like, you need to prep. Like, you can't come to my house. Like, I can give you stuff, but if anything happens, I can hand you over stuff. But you cannot come to my house. You cannot just think that you're going to depend on me and take away from my family because you decided not to prep. Especially when we have seen a hundred red flags and warning signals and whatever else you want to call it there is just crap happening around like at this point things happen every single day there's something new happening either there's an outbreak of something something's spreading um there is a shortage of something a new shortage there is some kind of contamination that's going on food is being recalled you name it it's happening at this point so if everybody if you can't do I feel like if they do nothing else, you just need to prep. Like, I know some people are saying that, you know, like I've always got comments that said, like, in my area, we don't have that issue. My store shelves are completely full. Um, and I've gotten comments like, oh, well, if you do it this time of day, this is what you're going to expect, y'all. I feel like I have hit every single time. And um, before when I was doing this, like when I was so showing you the store shelves, I was going different times and it would be like to the same effect does it depend on the area you live is another question um i have for you guys do you think it makes a difference on how the store shelves are stocked depending on like the general area or the region that you're in i've heard some people say that like well-off areas tend to have um you know fuller shelves rather than like i guess poverty or more like low income areas I'm not sure that there's any truth to that. Um, where we moved from was a good area that didn't have, like, it wasn't, like, the income was a good, like, tax bracket, I guess, per se. Um, and I still had a lot of empty shelves. This area that we moved to now, this Walmart actually doesn't have any empty shelves like I experienced before at the last area. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to say this is like a small town that we're in. So I'm not really sure how like, I don't know how to explain it. Like financial wise people are doing, I don't know. Um, but like I said, I haven't really run into that issue where things are like out of stock or like not on the shelves like it was in the last area, but the last area was also bigger. So it's like that kind of probably attributes to those store shelves being empty. I mean, it's right off of 85 and 85 is like a main interstate, you know, going through North Carolina. Uh, takes, you takes you straight to Charlotte and everything. So that's probably, you know, that's probably the reason. Like I said, where we are now, it's more like of a small town. Um, there's a couple of different towns I have to travel to to get to certain places like Sam's and things like that. So that could definitely factor in as well. Um, just let me know what you guys' thoughts on that are as well. Um, I think that is all of this video. I feel like I'm kind of all over the place, so you guys bear with me. I, like I said, I'm trying to get back into this. Um, so I kind of feel like my head is kind of all over the place because I haven't recorded in forever. But that is the end of this video. If you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video.